I read from Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. Matthew 25, reading from verse 31 through to 46. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. He will place the sheep on his right and the goat on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous would answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink, a stranger, and you gave me no welcome, naked, and you gave me no clothing, ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they would answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, or ill or in prison? and not minister to your needs. He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, with great joy we celebrate today. Because today, as I said, is the last Sunday on the liturgical calendar. And when I say liturgical calendar, I have explained it here over and over. But let us use this as a reminder 
that by liturgical calendar, we are thinking of how the church organizes her celebrations and events around the event of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do so by going through that process. So for the church, the liturgical year starts with the season of Advent. From there, we go through different celebrations, and it brings us to the final day, which is this big Sunday that we call the Feast of Christ the King. So according to the liturgical calendar, there are 34 Sundays in ordinary time. So it means that we have taken the Sundays in Advent, Sundays in uh, Christmas, Sundays of Lent, and Sundays of the Easter season out. They are part of it, but when we are counting by the ordinary times, the time outside of these key and important celebrations in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have 34 Sundays of ordinary time. And the last Sunday of ordinary time is what we refer to as the Feast of Christ the King. So we crown that liturgical year with the kingship and the lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. But then the liturgical year is also a way through which the church guides us, directs us, forms us, and then journeys with us throughout the movement of time. So the movement of time for us is not just time passing, but it is our journey through life as we listen to the call of God to be holy, as he himself is holy, and then we listen to the call of God to be his image and likeness, and we listen to the call of God to be members of the kingdom of God. So Jesus Christ will come to this world and proclaim the arrival of the kingdom of God. And through that public ministry, he invites you, he invites me to be members of that kingdom. So having come to that end of the liturgical season, we crown it appropriately with the feast of the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. But for the coronavirus, today would have been a public celebration in which we gather as parishes and then we have this uh, grand celebration uh, with pomp and with all celebration uh, to be able to proclaim Jesus Christ uh, as king of the universe. And we have a little, added a little bit of our tradition to this. When as kings we carry them in palanquins, today we would have carried Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament around our community, proclaiming him as the true king of the universe. And then professing and confessing our desire and our passion to be members of that kingdom. So I do not proclaim Jesus as king of the universe for the sake of others. I proclaim it first and foremost because I want to be part of that kingdom. And then I ask other people to also come and be members of that kingdom. But my dear friends, it is not just an empty proclamation. It is a proclamation that must find evidence in the life that we live. That as a member of the kingdom of God, this is what I stand for. And so today we come together to celebrate this beautiful day and then we give glory and thanksgiving to God for giving us the hope, giving us the strength, and giving us the invitation to be members of this kingdom. I do pray that each and every one of us, regardless of the challenges that we go through, regardless of our difficulties, we will be able to work day in and out to be members of this kingdom. And today, as we do so, we listen to Jesus Christ, who presents this image of the final judgment to us. When he would come in his glory, 
And when surrounded by his angels, he would be able to sit in judgment and then separate the righteous from the wicked. And he gives a comparison of a shepherd who separates the sheep from the goats. And the yastic for that celebration is simply love. Were you able to love just as I had loved you? Were you able to demonstrate love to your brother, to your sister, just as I have loved you? And then Jesus Christ would say these beautiful words to those who would sit on his right hand side and say, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And that's my prayer that when finally we stand before the throne of God, each and every one of us would hear these words proclaimed to us. That our struggle here on earth, that our witnessing here on earth, that our lives of proclaiming the kingdom of God would ultimately lead us to the reception into that kingdom when he tells us, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And my dear friends, I do know that deep down in our hearts, each member of this community desires passionately to be addressed with these words. Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And these words do not come to us simply because we have been lazying around. These words do not come to us simply because we have been wishing for them. These words do not come to us simply because we have been members of the church. These words come to us because we have ultimately put the words of our Lord Jesus Christ into action and in practice. I was sick and you came to care for me. I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was naked and you came to clothe me in prison and you visited me. My dear friends, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ are not just empty words that do not find expression in our day-to-day -day activity. The kinship of our Lord Jesus Christ ultimately is translated into the love that we express to our brother, to our sister, and to our neighbor. When in this world the people think of kinship, they think of authority, they think of dominion, they think of the vast spread of their kinship and the territory that they survey. But my dear friends, Jesus Christ does not think of kinship in terms of power and domination and in terms of the acquisition of riches. Jesus thinks of power in terms of the manifestation of love, of justice, of making people sit free and live as the, king, as the children of God. And so in John chapter 18, reading verse 37, we come to that scene in which Pilate would ask Jesus Christ, are you a king? And Jesus Christ would affirm his kingship by saying, indeed, I am a king. This is why I was born. This is why I came into the world. And this is why I am going to die for my people. So his kingdom is not just like the kingdom of this world. It is not maintained by force. It is not maintained by arms. It is not maintained by fear. His kingdom is a kingdom of total submission in view of the love that he bears for you and for me. I am a king, and this is why I was born. I am a king, and this is why I stand before you in the humility and in the abject poverty and in the frailty of my life. But it is in this simplicity and humility that power and authority will translate 
into meaningful presence of the kingdom of God. And so Jesus Christ, uh, in affirming his kinship, uh, would ultimately go die on the cross. And that is what the liturgical year celebrates as well. Because throughout the course of the year, the church is guiding us to be able to celebrate these mysteries of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what we do, we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ at the beginning of the liturgical season. And then we continue by celebrating his public ministry. We would move on to the celebration of the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. But then that is not the end of our story. As Christians, our life is that Jesus Christ is risen and ascended to the Father. And where he is gone, we also hope to be. So that is the journey that we take throughout the course of the liturgical year. Celebrating the birth, the life, the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And his ascension into heaven where he awaits us. To be able to tell us, come. You bless of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And we respond to that in very many ways. Today, as I said at the beginning of Mass, 17 of us were ordained exactly today, 17 years ago, 22nd uh, November 2000, and uh, which year? Do your mass, do your mass. Let me know whether you are alive or you are, you are sleeping. 2000 and what? Uh, one more to come. I'll bombard you. <laughs> My dear friends, it was a wonderful day for the church because when we were coming into the priesthood, we were one thinking of our numbers. We were thinking also of what the Lord will be able to do with us. And we were thinking of the people of God. And we were thinking ultimately about the expansion of this kingdom of God. After 17 years, we know that we have worked in this diocese. Some of us have worked in villages, in towns, and in cities. Some of us have worked not only in Ghana, but in different parts of this world. As I speak to you, 10 of us are in Ghana, seven are in different countries around the world, exercising the same ministry that the Lord gave to us 17 years ago. And this is a reason for great joy, because the Lord found it fit to choose us to be able to share in this ministry of proclaiming the advancement of the kingdom of God. So it is not about us. It is ultimately about God, and it is ultimately about you. And so we say, not to us, not to us, O Lord, but to your name be the glory and the honor. Support those who are neglected and are left on the margins of society. And we go out to express the love of God to people in concrete terms. So we celebrate this day in thanksgiving to God, and we do so with all of you. It is my prayer that as we proclaim Jesus Christ as the king of the universe, that kinship will start in our hearts. That kinship will transform our choices and our attitude. That kinship would inform our vision of this world and that kingdom would ultimately would find expression in the way we relate to one another. May the good Lord continue to bless us that as we journey towards the full realization of the kingdom. And always, amen. Christmas, amen.